Live from your local election headquarters at the 22 News Broadcast Center, this is a Springfield Mayoral Forum. And now, here's Rich Tedemer. Welcome to a special Your Local Election Headquarters presentation. I am Rich Tedemer, and all this week, 22 News will be hosting a series of forums featuring candidates running for mayor in local cities. Today, 22 News is hosting the candidates running for mayor of Springfield. We're joined in the studio by Mayor Dominic Sarno and City Councilor Justin Hurst. We're going to begin with the opening statements, and each candidate will have one minute to make his opening statement. The order of these statements was determined by a drawing prior to the program, and Mayor Dominic Sarno, you'll go first. Rich, uh, thank you very, very much, and to 22 News, thank you very, very much. You know, when I took over as mayor 16 years ago, we were near bankruptcy. Now we have the highest bond ratings in the city's history, a healthy reserve of well over $60 million. I've been battle-tested. I've led us through a number of unforeseen natural and man-made disasters. Our schools, 50% graduation rate, which was unacceptable, now 86%. We've built $750 million of new schools, the most in the state. First in the state, universal free, full day pre-K that we have. Five billion dollars of economic development. I love this job, I do it 24 seven, and I ask, respectfully ask for your vote November 7th on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Councilor Hurst, your opening statement, please. Thank you to 22 News and thank you Mayor Sarno for having the courage to sit on the stage and uh, have a debate with us uh, this afternoon. I'm running for mayor of Springfield because I wanna ensure that all of our young people receive a first class education. Uh, I'm running for mayor because I wanna make sure that we have a comprehensive plan to address gun violence in the city of Springfield. I'm running for mayor because I wanna ensure that contracts go to local businesses in the city. I'm running for mayor because I want to make sure that we enforce the residency ordinance so that hundreds of thousands of dollars don't go outside to the surrounding suburbs on a yearly basis. I'm running for mayor because I know that we need to invest in our young people here in the city of Springfield and not just talk about a sports complex, but actually make it happen. I'm running for mayor because people are tired of seeing their taxes go up year after year after year. I'm running for mayor because it's about time that we eliminate the tax fee once and for all. I'm running for mayor because there are a ton of people being left out and we need a government that's inclusive. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. We now move on to our question and answer portion of the program. I'll ask each candidate the same question and each candidate will have one minute to respond. There's no time set aside for rebuttal. Let's get to the first question, which by virtue of drawing, City Councilor Justin Hurst will answer first. Springfield has seen an increase in violent crime over the past year with homicides reaching a new high of 27 since the beginning of January. What do you think is causing this recent increase in violence? And as mayor, what would you do over the next four years to bring violent crime down and make sure city residents feel safe? Thank you, Rich. Uh, I believe it's the mayor that's causing the increase in this uh, spate of violence here in the city of Springfield. This is the culmination of 16 years of a disinvestment in our young people as well as our neighborhoods. Uh, as mayor of Springfield, I actually have a comprehensive plan that involves the community. As part of that plan, I'm going to ensure that we have a full complement of police officers. As right now, we are 70 police officers short. I'm going to make sure that we have police officers on uh, both state and federal task force here in the city of Springfield. I'm going to make sure that our specialized units work past midnight. In addition to that, I'm going to make sure that they work on the weekends, which is currently not happening. We're also going to invest uh, in the programs on the ground uh, where organizations are putting in the work to reduce gun violence. What I'm not going to do is come to you with a universal pass that, uh, and, and try to convince the residents that that's going to solve gun violence, knowing that that universal pass uh, to go to free um, gyms in the city has been in place for the last six years. What I'm also going to do is have conversations with those that are on the ground that have connections to the individuals that Time are causing up. gun violence in the city of Springfield. Mayor Sarno, your answer to the question, please. All the things that my uh, opponent has indicated, we have done youth, millions and millions of dollars invested in youth development, our schools, re-entry programs, which I invest with Sheriff Kochi and Roca. Also, that's extremely important is that we're making multitude of arrests. We've taken record number of legal guns off the street. The key thing here is that with our court system and judges, and DA Galuni and Sheriff Kochi have said it, we have those one or two percent repeat violent offenders who continually are put back on our streets in our neighborhoods. 
You deal with that situation, all the proactive stuff that we're doing, body-worn cameras, that's going to make the difference on it. So keep those repeat violent criminal offenders locked up off our streets and out of our neighborhoods. You will see gun violence go down substantially. We are doing massive investment in youth development in our schools, reentry programs, so it's all there. The missing link right now is to keep those repeat violent criminal offenders off our streets and out of our neighborhoods. I will continue to push my bail legislation so that we can do that and make sure that we're all safe and sound. Mayor Sarno, you get the next question first. Uh, after a legal fight that went all the way to the state's highest court, Springfield now has a board of police commissioners that has the final say on police disciplinary matters. It's a five member board that's appointed by the mayor. What do you think of the work that police commission has done so far and what qualities would you look for when making appointments to the commission? Well, we followed through with the appointments of the Board of Police Commissioners. These are very well-respected individuals that represent the community, very diversified uh, as they're moving forward. And we made sure that we worked very, very well with DOJ, and uh, we have a good working relationship. And I followed through completely on the court order there on discipline. And they rule on discipline, and we're looking forward to continuing to make sure we have the best police force in the city, best police force in the state and in the nation. But we followed through with all that has to be done. The Board of Police Commissioners, very professional, very diversified, well respected, and they reflect the community. And we're working very, very well with DOJ on initiatives and reforms put forward. Justin Hurst, your answer, please. What good is the police commission if they're beholden to the mayor? Unfortunately, right now, we have a police commission that is not free from political interference. Mayor Sarno has hand selected every last member that was on the police commission. There was no criteria, there was no community involvement. All it was was a handshake and a backdoor deal to serve on the police commission, which means that the only folks that these commissioners are accountable to are the mayor. In addition to that, the mayor has failed to fund this police commission. On top of that, we have a police commission that does not have their full, um, their full rights as it uh, is reflected in the law. They don't have the ability to hire, fire, promote, and discipline. And the last time I read the legislation uh, that was ruled on by the Supreme Court, that's the, those are the powers that they should have. So until we have a police commission that is free from political in, in, uh, interference, one that is actually invested in, has its own budget, is not tied to the police department itself, we will never hold uh, rogue officers accountable for their actions. Council Hurst, you get the next question first. The Springfield Police Department is currently subject to a consent decree with the Justice Department. This is due to an investigation into excessive force by members of the now defunct Narcotics Bureau. Do you think the department is doing a good job by complying with the actions demanded by the consent decree? And do you think there needs to be other reforms to the police department? I do. I think, uh, first of all, the short answer is no. They've gone kicking and screaming, uh, believing that uh, their policies in the police department are the right thing to do. If they were the right thing to do, we would not be the only police department uh, in the country that received a consent decree under uh, the Trump administration. And so clearly, we're not doing what it is that we need to do to make sure that we're holding our officers accountable. The first thing that I would do as the mayor of Springfield is I would make sure that we have a new police chief, uh, and that police chief would be subject, uh, we would have a national search to uh, hire that particular police chief that actually involves the community. Uh, on top of that, we need to make sure that our police officers themselves are receiving the training to make sure that they are effective uh, as they go out into the streets and actually have a relationship with the individuals that they are dealing with. Uh, in short, we need to do better as it relates to following the consent decree to the letter of the law, and we need to do more work in terms of uh, working with our compliance officer and follow the consent decree to the T. Mayor Sarno, your answer, please. We've done exactly that. We have a very good work relationship with DOJ, Kathleen O'Toole, our compliance evaluator, and also with the judge, and they've indicated that. There's been numerous reforms and initiatives that have been put forward with Police Superintendent Cheryl Clapproot, so we're doing exactly that as we continue to move our police department forward. Okay, Mayor Sarno, you get the next question first. The city of Springfield received more than $120 million in ARPA funds from the federal government, which have been allocated to businesses, nonprofits, and individuals. How would you characterize the rollout of ARPA funds in the city, and do you think that the process for selecting recipients has been fair? It's been very fair. We've followed all the federal requirements. 88% 
of those funds have gone to minority or women-owned businesses. We've helped out many, many businesses, nonprofits, neighborhoods. We've been able to save jobs and create new jobs moving forward. Also, families, 8,000 families have been helped out directly with over $10 million. So we put forth a very comprehensive program. I went to about 40 listening sessions during the height of COVID with our business community, nonprofits, you name it, and our neighborhood councils. We've invested millions of dollars in our neighborhoods, infrastructure improvements. So we followed all the federal procurement and the guidelines, and we continue to help people. We've saved jobs. We've created jobs. We've helped out families. We continue to move forward on it, and I'm very proud of my ARPA team, what we've been able to do. Comprehensive plan, seven categories, uh, one of the few doing it in the state, if not the nation, and helping out families individually, too. Councilor Hurst, your answer, please. Thank you. Uh, the mayor has used this $123.9 million as his own personal slush fund. Uh, we know uh, that that was illustrated extremely clearly uh, when he did outdoor dining and he allocated $250,000 for outdoor dining uh, to a bar uh, that didn't even have a, um, a kitchen. Uh, in fact, all they had to show for their outdoor dining was a hot dog machine that they ultimately served their patrons. I'm assuming they were going to serve them hot dogs outdoor. Uh, in addition to that, we had other businesses uh, that uh, received money that didn't deserve the money. Uh, we had $40,000 picnic tables in uh, one, uh, one particular business. There have been multiple conflicts of interest in ARPA funding, which shows to me that there have been backdoor dealings and handshakes as to the distribution of this money in terms of who gets it. And then the $1,400 payments to the residents of Springfield, I am tired of them asking me for the money. Their money should have gone out first and foremost and unfortunately that did not happen and they are still struggling. All right, gentlemen, we're at the halfway point of today's debate. We're going to take a short break and then we'll have more questions and answers for the candidates running for mayor of Springfield. You're watching a special Your Election Headquarters presentation right here on 22 News. You're watching a Springfield mayoral forum. Here's Rich Tedemer. Welcome back. And today, 22 News is hosting a forum among the candidates running for mayor of Springfield. We're joined by incumbent Mayor Dominic Sarno and his challenger, City Councilor Justin Hurst. And we continue with questions for the candidates. And Councilor Hurst will be the first to answer this next question. 
Downtown redevelopment has a long been a priority in Springfield, but efforts to build a vibrant downtown have sometimes brought criticism from residents of other neighborhoods. As mayor over the next four years, what would you do to encourage development downtown while also making sure the rest of the city doesn't get left out? I can tell you one thing, we focused entirely too much money uh, on the downtown area at the expense of our communities. We know that our neighborhoods want their businesses invested in. Uh, we also know that they want their uh, streets that are not strewn with litter. Uh, they want their parks uh, cleaned up and making sure that they're playable so that families can live, work, and enjoy uh, the city of Springfield. And so what I would recommend that we do is we need to do a significant investment in our small businesses here in the city of Springfield. We need to make sure we're building relationships with those small businesses. We need to make sure that contracts are going to those small businesses and that Springfield is leading in terms of buying goods and services from those uh, small businesses here in the city of Springfield. In addition, we need to invest a significant amount of money into the little things. Uh, one of the frustrating things for residents throughout the city of Springfield is that we're not getting the little things right. We need to make sure that our terraces are groomed and we need to make sure that businesses are being held accountable for their dilapidated properties throughout the entire city of Springfield. Mayor Sarno, your answer please. We've invested millions and millions of dollars in small businesses throughout all the neighborhoods of the city of Springfield. We've been able to save jobs, keep people working. And also you have to remember that downtown is a neighborhood. We want vibrancy all across our city. But the track record is there in investments in parks, schools, senior centers, community centers, small business, nonprofits who touch thousands and thousands of people. But millions of dollars have gone into small businesses, helping them keep their doors open and helping them move forward. And downtown is a neighborhood. And it's important vibrancy is not only in our downtown area, but throughout all, all our neighborhoods. And I'm very proud of my administration, the millions and millions of dollars we invested in small businesses throughout the city of Springfield in all our neighborhoods. I'm out in all our neighborhoods all the time. That came from our 40 meetings I had and listening sessions on there. So remember and don't forget, downtown is also a neighborhood and we invest in all our neighborhoods in the city of Springfield. Mayor Sarno, you get the next question first. Homelessness is a persistent problem in Springfield and in many cities throughout the country. The city is home to multiple private organizations that provide shelter or other resources to people experiencing homelessness, but the government can also have a role to play. As mayor, what would you do to help people experiencing homelessness in Springfield? Fund a multitude of programs, millions and millions of dollars, uh, Catholic charities, other organizations that we help people get on their feet, the Friends of the Homeless. What has happened is that this COVID-19 worldwide pandemic has caused an epidemic when it pertains to mental health and we're funding millions of dollars in mental health type things. We need more housing and support systems. We're gonna have about 600 more units coming on all different types of housing. But also what has happened too is that treatment is needed and many a times with these individuals there's mental health situations that are arising there. But I fund many, many programs that are a housing first program we've been noted on but the pandemic has exacerbated this situation on mental health. We'll continue to do that and work with all our federal and state partners and, and private landlords also to make sure that those people get housed, but get the mental health help that they need and drug addiction help that they need to get them off the streets. Councilor Hurst, your answer, please. Thank you. We've had uh, 16 years to get that done and that hasn't happened. Uh, we're looking at 600 units uh, getting back on the, on, on the market with respect to housing. We're 16,000 uh, units short right now. The first thing that I would do is make sure that we have a competent building department and make sure that the commissioner of that building department actually lives in the city of Springfield and understands uh, the breadth and the gravity of what is happening right now in terms of our homeless population. It's one thing to come in here uh, and, and work here and then uh, go back out to the suburbs. It's another thing to come in here and understand that people are really suffering and people need help desperately. In addition to that, I'd make sure that uh, we are holding these big time landlords accountable like the Springfield Gardens of the world and making sure uh, that we are hiring enough individuals in code enforcement so that we're not short uh, code enforcement officers so that they can in turn uh, make sure that they're doing the building inspections that they need to do and make sure that they have the support uh, from the attorneys in code enforcement so that they can get these developers uh, and landlords in the court immediately Time. and get these dilapidated properties back on the road. You get the next question first. Education is a top concern for parents in every community. 
How would you characterize the current state of public education in Springfield? And as mayor, what would you do over the next four years to ensure students in the city receive the best public education possible? As a former educator in the city of Springfield, I know how important it is to really invest in our young people. Currently, right now, uh, what we're doing in terms of gauging our success is around graduation and dropout rates. To me, that's an extremely low bar. Uh, we need to make sure that our young people who are not going to two and four year institutions, which is what the data says, are coming out ready to be employed and actually have the skills uh, to be employable, thereby attracting more businesses here to the city of Springfield uh, because we have individuals who are ready and prepared to fill those jobs. Uh, I can tell you one thing that I won't do. I will not allow uh, my superintendent on the first two weeks of school uh, to take a vacation while so many other teachers uh, are working hard and so many administrators are working hard to ensure that our students receive the, everything that they need to be successful. The idea that we can take a trip to go see the Notre Dame game uh, is absolutely uh, absurd and it's something that is a reflection of leadership and we need to get that rectified. Mayor Sarno, your answer please. You know, you look at it. When I took over as mayor, the graduation rate was 50%. We're nearly 86% now. When you look at it, universal, free, full-day pre-K, first in, in the state to do that. So our young families have a positive path for them. When you look at our schools, $750 million, three-quarters of a billion dollars in new schools being built. Just editorial just came out now on the improvements we've made on our MCAS. We work with all our business community on workforce development, the portrait of the graduate. So all the facts are there. And again, my opponent seems to have some of the facts wrong. His wife, uh, my colleague Denise Hurst, sits on the school committee. And I would think that we've made tremendous amount of improvements and advancement in our Springfield Public School System under the leadership of Superintendent Dan Warwick. And we're going to continue that. But look at the flat facts. That's the key thing there. And we'll continue to move forward with our education system and investment in our young people across the board. Mayor Sarno, you get the next question first. The financial crisis in the 2000s resulted in much of the city's government authority being lost to a state appointed finance control board. That control board is now gone. And Springfield's financial situation has improved since then. As mayor, what would you do to make sure the city never finds itself in such a financial crisis ever again? Well, I'm proud of the fact when I did take over, you're absolutely right, the Financial Control Board, the city was on the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, now I have the highest bond ratings in the city's history, over well over $60 million in a rainy day account. We have checks and balances when it pertains to our finances. And I think what's also extremely important is that we've been able to invest our money in order to make money that we can provide for city services and major projects that we go forward. But I have a great financial team and the proofs in the pudding. Nine consecutive balanced budgets without use of reserves. Unheard of many a times in urban centers. And financial stability is key. We could be moving into a recession. I hope I'm wrong on that. And I will always continue to make not only public safety my number one priority, but financial stability. I'm very proud of where we've come. The Financial Control Board has been long gone. 15, 16 years ago, and I'm proud of the track record and the financial team that we put forward for the city of Springfield. Councilor Hurst, your answer, please. We need to surround ourselves uh, with people that are going to be fiscal stewards. And one of the reasons why we had so much success as a city financially uh, is because we had the TJ Plants of the world who were the chief financial uh, officer here in the city of Springfield. Uh, unfortunately, over the course of the last few months, uh, TJ Plant has left the city and has left the city because he didn't want to be caught holding the bag as it relates to the ARPA funds that is being misappropriated and misspent here in the city of Springfield. So one of the first things that I would do is make sure that we get uh, the TJ plans of the world back and certainly are looking to him uh, for the advice as to how to move forward since he's done such a phenomenal job. The idea that we let him go is extremely problematic and more importantly the idea that he wanted to leave ought to raise serious uh, questions with the electorate. Councilor Hirsch, you get the next question first. Springfield has seen more than its share of deadly car crashes involving pedestrians in multiple areas of the city. What do you think needs to be done to ensure the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, and other vulnerable road users in the city? The idea that we haven't come up with a solution after losing so many lives here in the city of Springfield, uh, across from the main library uh, on State Street, 
uh, to me just speaks to a failure in leadership. Uh, we've gone through $123.9 million in ARPA funds, and the, the fact that we haven't invested in our streets uh, to slow individuals down and to make sure our streets are safe, uh, we've done little to nothing, and yet you have individuals who are still suffering and are still trying to heal from losing uh, the lives of municipal workers here in the city of Springfield. Uh, we haven't done enough over the course of the last 16 years, uh, but what we need to do is invest a lot of the money that unfortunately uh, has been given away to businesses that don't deserve it uh, back into uh, the little things, which are making sure that we have safe intersections here in the city of Springfield. Mayor Sarno. Once again, my opponent doesn't have the facts straight. We have uh, major, major grants and investments that have gone in, $15 million, 15 different intersections that we're going to be doing, some that we've already done, the neighborhood improvements, many of times the pedestrian vehicular that have gone on there. We've also done massive traffic enforcement with Police Superintendent Cheryl Clapper with educational type aspects. And then you have to get to the heart of what caused this accident. Was it infrastructure? Was it weather? Was it vehicular? Was it the pedestrian? So we've invested and will continue to invest millions and millions of dollars. We're doing 15 major intersections currently now that are starting, including the State Street Quarter that DPW Director Chris Signoli is moving on. And there's more to come. But many of the neighborhood investments have been infrastructure improvements pertaining to pedestrian and ve vehicular improvements. Gentlemen, we have 15 seconds to answer this very last question. Yeah. So Mayor Sarno, you go first. Governor Healy says that the state's emergency shelter system is about to run out of capacity as a growing number of migrants continue to arrive in Massachusetts. Would you support the location of migrants in hotels or other forms of shelter in the city? My first priority is Springfield residents. Uh, when and if we can help out individuals coming uh, from other countries and migrants, we try to do it to the best of my abilities, our abilities. But my first responsibility is the Springfield residents who need housing. And as we continue to move forward, if we can help, we'll try to help. But Springfield residents are my first priority. Councilor Hurst. No, but I'd certainly be compassionate about the way in which we say that. And I'd also would have, uh, make sure that we have a working relationship uh, with Governor Haley and her administration, knowing that what they can do is offer significant funding here to the city of Springfield uh, to ensure that our residents are taken care of first. Okay, gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today's forum. Thank you to Springfield Mayor Dominic Sarno and City Councilor Justin Hurst for participating today. If you missed any of today's program, it'll be available in its entirety on our website at WWLP.com. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 1230 when 22 News will host a forum with the candidates running for mayor of Chicopee. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th, but early voting in Springfield starts this Wednesday, October 25th. I'm Rich Tedemer. Have a good afternoon. See ya.